This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. It's often only through the caring and commitment of strangers that we can survive the unthinkable. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of heroes who give us hope on Rescue 911. We begin on Sunday, December 15, 1991, in the small town of Vista, California, where Richard Hageman was at home in his apartment looking after his two young daughters. Can you go outside and play? Oh, sure, but say right out back where I can keep an eye on you. I said, that's fine. You can go out back and play. I thought nothing of it. I usually check on the children every five, ten minutes. This, but you know what I found? All this money. Look at all that money. You know what? There's ten times as much as this back here, but I'm having trouble counting it. Do you want to come back here and help me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was hoping. This map just look for money by our house. Look at all this money I found. He showed money to oh, Shannon, to my sister. Here. I found some along the fence. Let's take a look. Look at all that money right there. Don't worry, I'll be back for you in a minute. You come back for me and take me for ice cream. Yeah. I was on my way out back to check on the children. Rachel came running up to me. Daddy, Daddy, somebody just took Shannon. I immediately ran with her into the carport. My daughter pointed to a green sedan. When six-year-old Shannon was abducted by a man from in front of her apartment, her father Richard got a glimpse of the car as it sped away and ran inside to call for help. Sir, it's 911 emergency. Yes, my daughter just got kidnapped okay. in my apartment complex. Okay, did you say who took her? It was a little green low rider. Which way did they go? Uh, they, I ran out the I was scared to death. I've been reading in the paper recently about all the different kidnappings in the area. They have never found one of the victims alive. And the people that were in the car? Uh, my other daughter said it was a guy with a white, black, Mexican what? It was a white male with something in his hair, she said. Wait a second, I'm going to get the thing started. How old is your daughter? Six years old. Don Brownson had only been a San Diego County Sheriff's dispatcher for a year. Whenever you get a call like this, you want to get the initial information to the radio, because the thing you would see would be the car first. 
31 Paul 2, a unit to cover. Possible 2 The report of the abduction was relayed to units throughout the area. She's six years old. What's her name? Shannon. Okay. I need a little description of what your uh, daughter was wearing, okay? A sweater top with a hood, white with brown trim on it. I was very fearful for her life. So I tried to keep as calm as I could and be as accurate as I could. Uh, no description on the guy other than he had a thing in his hair? That's all my daughter said. I was just walking out to check yeah. and she said they just took her and offered her could, she, could you ask how old your the other daughter? She just turned five. Oh, boy. The five-year-old said the suspect was quite known with a thing in his hair. Yeah, they wanted to know more vehicle information if possible. Uh, that's important. That's the first thing we're going to see, okay? It was top. It, I'd say it's a Datsun or Toyota. It's almost a lime green, I guess. Okay. Say. So it was a sedan, not a pickup, right? Yeah, I'd say a two-door from the size of it. Okay, I'm going to let you go. If I have any more questions, we have any more questions, we'll be calling you back. Tonight, All right. Okay? Thank you. All right, sir. I wanted Shannon back because I missed her. You're going to the last direction of travel? Towards Palomar NSC from Bonaire Road. One of the detectives assigned to the case was Ed Pollock. They put out a code five, which is a call to all the units to start stakeouts surrounding the crime scene. In this case, they're looking for that lime green car. Also among those searching for the missing girl was Deputy Nelson Prosper. When the supervisor said to take up a code fire position, each unit made up their own mind of where they want to go. I tried to put myself into his shoes. If I wanted to get away, which way would I go? So I said, I'm going to take the Bonzo Bridge, hoping that this guy would take her to a rural area where no one's around. What's your daughter's name? Shannon. Words really can't describe the feeling you have when you lose someone. This was extremely difficult for me because I have lost a son before. My house burned down in Pennsylvania and my son died. And I thought I was losing a second. I was losing a daughter. I've got uh, Escondido and Fallbrook units staging on the uh, freeways to Code 5 the area. We haven't seen it yet, though. Leticia Hernandez came to mind. Seven-year-old girl from Oceanside that was abducted from the front of her house. I believe it was a year before they found bones that they discovered were hers. The vehicle was last seen actually on Von Air and possibly en route to Talmont. As I'm sitting there looking at the intersection, I could see a lime green car coming eastbound on East Vista Way. They said it was lime green. This thing was lime green. My blood is pumping, the adrenaline is pumping. I'm thinking, this has got to be it. As I got closer, I could see the head of a child. I couldn't tell whether it was a boy or a girl at that point. Be making a left on Holly Lanes, California Plate 526 George Boy Unit. Guys like this, you don't know what they're capable of. That includes killing the cop, killing the kid, whatever it takes to get away. I decided at this point I gotta stop him here. I don't want him to go any further. B141, I have a possible suspect vehicle stopped. 4,000 block of Cary Lane, past the uh, Bonzo Bridge. Is there a name on the uh, victim? Affirma, Shannon. 10 4, send me some cover. I could see him looking in the rear view mirror, looking in his side view mirror. I could sense that he was real nervous. 
this your car? Yes, officer, it is. What's your relationship to the child there? She's a friend of mine. He couldn't come up with an answer right away. When he said, uh, it's just a friend, I knew that right then and there, this is the guy, this is the girl. Is something wrong? Just step out of the car for me. I can see the little girl. She's starting to cry. Did he go to the front of my car? Stay right there, sweetheart. Right to the front of the car. If this guy wants to not go along with the program, I'm going to be in here for a good long fight because he's a big boy. All the way down. There you go. Keep your hands right there. Until I get him handcuffed and in the back seat of my car, then I kind of feel a sigh of relief. Okay, come on out here, sweetheart. Come on. Everything's okay. Come on out. It was like I was picking up one of my own kids. I almost cried. I almost cried telling her to calm down. Her dad was coming to pick her up. Uh, you get that big knot in your throat. Uh, it was incredible. It is hard to describe how you can feel after getting a loved one back after a kidnapping. It's the feeling that you have your child and you're going to make sure she's safe for life. The suspect subsequently pleaded guilty to child molestation and was sentenced to 17 years in prison. In the 10 months since the incident, the whole family has been doing all they can to deal with the painful memories of that day. It basically has devastated the whole entire family. Shannon, Rachel, and Rich are all receiving therapy. It doesn't matter where you live or how many times you tell your child over and over again you don't talk to strangers. They're still children, and they're still susceptible to anything. I work for San Diego County Sheriff's Department. Is anyone to help educate children, the Sheriff's Department offers a special class for area schools, hosted in part by McGruff the Crime Dog. That's right! When you are in trouble, you scream, you yell, you run, you get help! We encourage kids, you know, we don't want to fill them with paranoia of strangers because certainly not every person walking down the street is out to do them harm. A lot of adults can trick people into doing things they don't really mean to do. But if you're scared or you feel something wrong, run and tell a trusted adult. If the stranger wants you to go, then don't go. The police did an excellent job in this. For Officer Prosper to find her within a half hour of the time that she was taken is a miracle. As long as I live, I'll remember this part of my law enforcement career forever. One of the greatest feelings, being a cop and doing something good for a kid. That's what it's all about.